So let's talk about how to start a blog in 2023. Now, a few years ago, I actually started a blog and then jumped out on faith and left my corporate job to create content full time with that blog being at the foundation of that. Now, since then, that blog has made me thousands of dollars. I've been able to work with major brands, take destination trips, do speaking engagements, and so many amazing things that I know wouldn't have happened had it not been for that blog being at the foundation of my business. Now, since then, some things have happened and my blog is not necessarily at the forefront of my business, but everything I do is kind of because of that blog. So today I want to give you a little bit about my journey, some tips that you can implement for yourself, and then a step-by-step -step breakdown on exactly how I would start a successful, profitable blog in 2023. So when I started my blog, The Creator space was a lot different. Blogging was the thing to do. It was how to get yourself out there and kind of start your make money online journey. And so that's exactly what I did. And I did that with not much knowledge or expertise on what I was doing. I was just jumping out, doing something that I wanted to do. And I was successful with it. So as I get ready to plan the year and what direction I want my business to take and what type of content I'm going to make to promote the type of business I'm going to be doing and all the other things that we have to do at the beginning of the year as business owners, content is at the forefront of those decisions. And so I've kind of been thinking about, okay, what are we gonna do this year? What type of content do I wanna to continue to make? What's the strategy? What platforms? All those things. I began to do my research search as every other business owner should be. And I ran across this article that talked about, you know, some trends that we should be on the lookout for this year as content marketers. And one that stuck out very big and boldly to me, it said, the written word speaks louder. And for some reason that resonated very much with me because again, I started as a blogger and kind of still consider myself a writer because I love to do it and I can express myself really well um, in written format. And as I read that and listened to other people that I respect in the online space and their predictions, I began to think about my strategy going into 2023. Now, last year, I decided to put my blog on the back burner and make YouTube the forefront of my content. And I'm not necessarily changing that approach, but I do want to make my blog a bigger priority in 2023. I actually want to get back to doing my blog semi full time where it's 50% of my content strategy. And before you jump and say, oh gosh, Nikisha, why are you doing that? It's because of my approach to content. I don't necessarily like the fast paced content and creating hundreds of thousands of pieces of content every month. Yeah, that's an exaggeration, but I don't like having to create all this content every single month. So for me, I love search base content. I love that approach. I love sprinkling my content on a search-based platform with the idea that it could be discovered months and weeks and years down the line. Because when I took my break during the panini that we just came out of, my search-based content is what sustained me and my family over that time. Now, unfortunately, I took a big hit with putting my blog on the back burner last year. It was a culmination of things. Obviously, I was not as consistent as I had been in the past with the blog. And then the Google updates kind of did me in, to be honest. Um, if you don't know, Google had a major update um, last year and a lot of my posts dropped in rank. And I really just need to get back to it, get in there, clean up my blog and really get going with the strategy that I have for 2023. So I want to go in with some tips that I'm going to be implementing to get my blog back up and running because basically it's like I'm starting anew. It's like I'm starting fresh. I still do have some traffic. Um, however, not as much as I had. I think I just checked and the page views were like 15,000 from last month, which December is a lower month, but 
I know that could be better. And so I want to give you some tips that I'm personally going to be implementing. I think you should definitely implement if you currently have a blog, maybe you've been neglecting it or you just kind of let it fall off. And even if you are a newbie, these are some things that you need to be implementing from the beginning. After I give these tips, we will go into the full strategy on how you should be launching your blog in 2023. Now, because of the major hit that I took last year, the first thing that I need to do is to go ahead and jump into Google Analytics and see what's going on with my blog. If you're a new in the blogging space, you need to make sure that you are on Google Analytics. Now, Google Analytics is a place that basically tells you what's happening with your blog, what blog posts are doing well, what, where you're getting your traffic from, basically what's working and what's not. And that is something you need to install on your blog from day one. It will be a lifesaver and help you you not create things that just aren't working and help you to create more of what your audience does want to see. So I need to get into Google Analytics and see what blog posts are doing well for me and redo those posts. A big part of um, keeping traffic as a current blogger is to keep your posts that are doing well fresh and current and at the top of the search engine. So the very first thing I'm going to be doing is jumping into Google Analytics, look for my top 10 posts and make sure that I'm, upda I'm updating those, I am optimizing them in a way that is fresh and new, putting my perspective in on them, adding some videos, adding new, vi adding new photos, whatever I can do to just spice the posts up, make it have maximum value so that when people come, they want to not only read that post in its entirety, but move on to another post that may be able to help them and supplement with the knowledge that they originally came for. So that's the first thing you need to be in Google Analytics and using that for your benefit. Now, after I do that, I need to make sure that I come up with a schedule that I can stay consistent because consistency is going to be the key for me to revive this blog. Much like how YouTube is, and I often tell my clients, and I've said here on the channel many, many times, after you've taken a break and after you've not been doing what you're supposed to do, consistency will wake the algorithm back up and tell that platform that, okay, I'm serious about this. I want to do it this time. And I know for sure that that works with Google, YouTube, Google, same thing. So what I'm going to be doing is coming up with a schedule that really works for me and that I can stick with. And this is something that you should be doing on your brand new blog as well. If you know that your life cannot sustain you doing three posts a week, don't even try to do three posts a week. So what I'm going to be doing is starting out with one post a week. One really good, well-researched, very thoughtful post a week that I can stick to putting up at the, on the same day at the same time each and every week. Now, this is what I can do for now with the type of content that I want to put out. However, once I consistently do that one post a week and I prove to myself and prove to Google that I'm here to stay, I'm serious about this, then I'm going to bump that up to two times a week and then I will stay right there. I will stay with the two posts a week um, until I see that traffic building back up and I really see things um, getting in motion and I get the team together and we can do more than that. But I'm going to stop at the two times a week and I think that it's a really um, a good place to be when it just comes to long form content because it takes so much to do. And so I think that if you can do one good piece, that's amazing. But if you can do two pieces, that's even better. So we're going to rest on two posts a week. If that's what you can do as well with your brand new blog, I think that is a good starting point. And with those two posts a week, I'm really, really going to be focusing in on search engine optimization, SEO, 
and keywords. That is where I'm really going to focus to try to find the keywords that are going to work for my blog and really work for me. So a great way to do this is to kind of spy on your competition and see what they're writing and what they're ranking for. Not that we're going to take these ideas or that we're going to copy these ideas, but what we want to do is see where the audience attention is at that time. So if you see your peer and they're talking about a specific thing and you notice that they're getting more comments and more engagement on that particular type of post or that particular topic, then that may be something that you want to research and see if you can rank for. Obviously, you can use tools like KW Finder, Key Search, Ahrefs, any keyword research tool will be great for you to find keywords that are going to be low competition but high search volume, which is typically what you want to do. You want to find something that people want to know about but not many people are writing about. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be looking for keywords that my audience wants to know about but that I can actually provide some value behind that specific type of content for them. So focusing in on SEO and keywords is huge. This is something that I had no clue about when I was first starting my blog and I really, really wish I had. I'm just happy I started to be honest, but I wish I had known about it sooner because I wrote so many posts on my site simply just because I wanted to express myself or I wanted to share a particular thing about myself or my life. And to be honest, no one really cared about it. I was really just kind of venting. And that's the thing about blogging and just creating content online in general is that people don't really care about you. You know, that sounds a bit harsh, but it's just the truth. People want answers to their questions. They want to gain knowledge. They want to know how you do something. They want value. You know, that's what they come for. They don't necessarily come for you. You know, they want to know what type of perfume is that that you wear? What do you do to your hair? How are you creating your content? They come for the value. And I was not creating value based posts when I first started my blog. And so had I known that SEO and keywords were a thing, I could have focused in a lot more on search engine optimization and been creating some content that would actually get me ranked and get people to my site and I just wasn't doing that. So a lot of the original um, content that I created on my blog basically does nothing for my site. You know, it's doing nothing for my site. It was really just me just venting and some of those posts um, was, it's really helpful to mothers and I keep them up because people do find them every single day and I get a lot of engagement from those posts because now I do have other posts that are bringing traffic to the site and then they stumble upon the ones that I created, you know, when I first started out and they really, really resonate with them. So um, yeah, I guess there was a benefit to those posts, but I wish I had have known about SEO. Next, I'm going to focus on the content types and the content formats, right? So the very first one, the content types that I want to create on my site, the very first content type I want to do is experience based content. And then the second is shoppable content. Now the first one, the experience based content is I want to document journeys that I'm on or document processes that I'm doing. Um, because as you know, there's AI right now that is really good, right? And it's giving people content and it's making the content creation process easier, right? And especially for blogging or written type of content, the only thing you have to do is go into an AI software like chat GPT and ask it to write you an article and it literally will write you an article in five minutes. And not only chat GPT, you have Jarvis, you have so many other um, tools that will do the exact same thing for you. But Here's the thing, ChatGPT is going on content that's already created on the internet. And it's basically just collecting all of the information it finds and creating something for you. However, that content is not always accurate. That content is not always uh, relevant, you know? And the one thing that it cannot do, it cannot 
give you an answer that replicates my actual authentic experience. At the core of content, I believe that you should speak from an authentic place and share your individual and personal knowledge and experience with the thing because that's why people will be drawn to you for your content it's because of who you are and your experience for instance there's a lot of young people online creating content and just really doing amazing in the online space but if you're over 30 and you're trying to get in this online space some of the young people can be unrelatable right because they don't have a full family and kids and, and and chores and a house to run and all that stuff and so a lot of times you want to find people who are in the season of life that you're in so that you can relate to them and you can figure out okay is she doing this I know that I can do it or you want to find someone with some sort of commonality or, or relatable attribute as you whether that's they're in the same age bracket they look like you they're African-American, they're female. You know, you want to find someone who's similar to you, which is why I kind of got in this space because I was like, okay, there's no one that looks like me talking about this. There's no women in this space or not none, but very few. Right. And so I was like, I'm just going to start documenting my experience. And that's exactly how I got into this space of talking about online business. For one, I absolutely love it. Okay. I love talking about it. I love just doing research, finding out about new things and just sharing my journey so that literally people can go back along the way. For me, my very first video of when I quit my job is still up on my YouTube channel, right? For me, there are days where I can look back and that's motivational. There are people that find that video and see where I am now and that's motivational. And so the content that I want to create on my blog this year is going to be very much experience based where it's talking about the things that I have done, journeys that I have went on and basically my experience that no AI bots or no other person can replicate because they can't replicate who I am and my experience with it. Second, I want to create shoppable content. So this is going to be content where I'm giving recommendations on particular things and people can actually make a purchase from that content and I think this is going to be content that will do well on the blog because when I'm looking to purchase something I'm looking for reviews I'm googling and I want to know what other people are thinking about it and if you're just starting that's something that you can do too because creating enough traffic to get accepted to a ad network right off the bat with your blog is unrealistic. You're not going to have enough traffic to be accepted to a ad network to make money off ads on your site for a while, for a few months. So I always suggest people lean into affiliate marketing first. Let that be one of the first things that you pursue and shoppable content is great for that. You have the Amazon affiliate program that you could absolutely join in the beginning and start generating some income based on the things that you already have. So for instance, you might say, uh, which camera is better, the Canon G7X or the Sony ZV-1? You know, you could totally create a blog post on um, that topic if that's something that you actually have experience with. So you can do that too as a new blogger, do content that people can shop and take your recommendations, whether it's your top five, I don't know, foundations that you like, top five lip glosses, I don't know, whatever it is that you're writing your content about, but you can create content that people can shop from and make you some money. Now, those are my content types. The content format that I want to focus on outside of my long form written content is going to be video, primarily on YouTube and Pinterest. Now, YouTube just offers an array of opportunity. Um, in 2023, they offer long form, short form, just it's just so many things you can do with YouTube if you've been around here long enough you already know how I feel about this YouTube and blogging is the Bonnie and Clyde of the internet and I just don't feel like there's a more powerful duo and so yes I will be focusing in on my YouTube channel in combination with my blog in order to get to where I want to be with my blog if you are brand new you can absolutely implement this you can create blog posts and 
and YouTube videos that supplement each other. If you're going to be writing a blog post on how to have better personal style, you could create a video on how to style basic pieces in your closet. Those are two pieces of content that supplement each other that the person who's looking for that would want to watch both. So I'm getting these tips and she's telling me to choose basic pieces in my closet, to style my hair in a nice way or whatever, to have better personal style. And then she has a video on some outfit ideas that I can create simply from the things in my closet. That is content that supplements one another and that that same person would want to watch. So YouTube is going to be one of my focuses along with Pinterest. Pinterest is another search based platform that I'm absolutely loving. I'm doing actually well on Pinterest without really even trying. I think the last time I checked, I had about 250,000 um, monthly views on Pinterest and I have not been posting lately. So I'm going to ramp back up on Pinterest. Idea pins are amazing. Affiliate marketing on Pinterest, just Pinterest. I've been dibbling and dabbling with Pinterest um, over the last year and I gotta say I like the results that I have seen with it. Um, it's one of the ways that, it's one of the things that have been sustaining my blog since the huge um, Google hit that I took with the algorithm update. But yeah, YouTube, Pinterest, I think that for a brand new blogger, this is going to be the perfect dynamic duo for when you're starting out with your blog. Okay, so now let's talk about starting your blog and the process to doing that and what you want to do. So before you even start your blog, there are some questions that you should ask yourself. You have to ask yourself if writing really is your thing. If you can sustain writing for the long term, because there's so many other ways to create content online. Would you rather start a podcast? Would you rather start a YouTube channel? Would you rather start on Instagram? There are so many ways that you can create content and get your message out. You have to think about if you really want to start a blog. Then you want to ask yourself, can you be consistent with it? So you know that you're going to write and you know that you're good at it, but are you going to be consistent? Because the one thing that I have learned about blogging is that consistency is key. And that's pretty much with anything online because uh, out of sight, out of mind, and people move on very fast. So you have to commit to being consistent when you first start out because you know how I feel about Google. They're from the show me state and they want to know that you're going to be there consistently bringing value so that they trust your site to put it in the search results, right? And so you got to decide if you're going to to be able to stick with it and be consistent at it. And so after you've decided that you can do this, you're gonna be consistent, you gotta think about what you are good at. What is it that you can bring to the online space that will be different and unique and that you can talk about it from a perspective that's going to be valuable to someone? So what are you going to make this blog about? What are you gonna talk about? And I always say, I think this should be something that you're truly passionate about or that you've had a really impactful journey with. So something you've experienced or documenting something or telling about something that happened to you something that works really well for this is people who have lost a ton of weight, right? So they can go back and share their journey and the things they did and the exercises and what they ate and how they lost the loose skin. And that is always phenomenal and weight loss, nutrition and all that stuff does really, really well. Um, so is it something like that is, are you an accountant by day, you know, and can you get online to provide tips to people on personal finance and budgeting and things like that? Have you repaired your credit? And can you get on here and share that with people? So I always say, I think it needs to be something that's going to be really, really impactful for people that can bring massive value and that will be worthwhile for you and your audience member. And the reason why I say do this is because this is going to be the thing that helps you stand out. It will be your differentiating factor. You need that in this crowded online space. You need something that helps you stand out and helps you be different than 
anybody else. Your journey will do that because no one has had the exact same journey as you, right? Yeah, a lot of people have lost weight, but they may have not been dealing with the life circumstances or the health concerns or whatever it is. Your journey, your testimony, your experience is going to be the thing that's going to set you apart. And that is so important. That is so, so, so important in order for you to find your audience, to find your tribe, to find the people that are going to support you and push this blog to the next space and the next level, which we all want to do. So it's truly important to get out here and be authentic and find something that you're truly passionate about or that you've had a journey with because it's going to help you to stand out and cause people to support you because of that differentiating factor that you have from the next person. And then just to be honest, you also need to think about how is it going to make you money, right? So if you see people in your niche and they're talking about their success or it's clear that they're very, very successful, more than likely there are a number of ways to monetize that thing or monetizing it is fairly simple. I know you're not getting out here to create a blog just for a hobby, right? I know you want to make money with it. So that's something you need to think about in the beginning. How are you going to make money? Is it even monetizable, right? You've got to think about that and you've got to do your research to figure out how people in your niche are actually monetizing your content. It's a very easy way to do that. Go to their blog. Are you seeing links out to other things? What are they linking to? Are they an affiliate for that? thing? Do they sell digital products? Do you see videos there? Are there ads on their blog? Very telling things that will show you if they're monetizing the site and how they are monetizing that site. So you want to keep that in mind at the top of starting this blog at the beginning before you even begin because doing the research to go into it um, is going to be very important and why waste your time doing all that if you can't monetize it. So some niches that are very high profit, high income. It's typically personal finance, the business space, the make money online space, the fitness niche it does really, really well. Lifestyle, motherhood, all those things are high income niches because they have a multitude of ways to monetize them. You can do many things with them. And so I want you to pick something that is going to offer you a lot of opportunities in order to make money. So how do you choose the right niche? How do you figure out what your blog is going to be about? There are a few questions that you can ask yourself, few things that you can think about in order to figure out exactly what you want to do. Now, the first question you can ask yourself is, do you love it? If you don't love it, do not start it because this is something that you're going to be talking about a lot and writing about and creating content about and people are going to be asking you. And so if you don't, love it, you probably shouldn't start it. Next, are people obsessed with it? Typically, when people are obsessed with something, you can do really, really well with it. Health, wealth, and relationships. Those typically are the top three things that people get obsessed with. We all want to make our coin. We want to make money out here. We want to make sure that we're healthy, that we can lose weight, and that we can look our best. And we want to have good people in our lives. We want to have amazing spouses who support us, friends that are amazing. We want to have good relationships in our lives. And so those are the three things that people are typically obsessed with. But there are hobbies that people are obsessed with too. Whatever sport they're into, traveling, their kids. So there are other things that people get obsessed with. You just have to figure out what that thing is and how it correlates with what you love. You just want to ensure that you have an audience behind the thing that you want to start your blog on because you want to make sure that you're writing for people. And when there's a healthy audience for that thing, I know a lot of times people who get intimidated by the competition, but when there's a healthy audience, then your chances of being successful in that thing, as long as you're creating amazing content is going to be greater. So you want to make sure that it's something that people love and that people can get behind so that you have an audience that's going to support your work. And then you want to know, are others thriving in this space? If you see that there are other bloggers who are doing superbly well, or even some that 
that are mid tier, then you know that there's a chance for your success. Healthy competition shows that the market is ripe, that the uh, opportunities there exist and it's probably a good thing for you to go into that space. Never look at the success of others as a competition or a reason for you not to do something. That just proves that the market is viable and that it's something that you can go into because there's always gonna be somebody for everybody, right? So they may be doing it their way or talking about it from their perspective, but you're going to jump in and you're going to add your own twist and you're going to talk about it from your perspective, right? So say for instance, we are talking about farm life and the person is talking about how they grow their own vegetables and take care of of their you know chickens and all that good stuff you may be talking about it from a completely different perspective you may come in and say you know what I'm going to talk about this from the perspective of how we farm as a family and how the kids help out and they collect the eggs and they feed the chickens and you know how they help grow the plants and how I let them pick the vegetables you may come in with an entirely different perspective that a different audience member may want to hear the information from you over the other person. So this is how you stand out. And this is why, like I said before, you have that differentiating factor because that's going to help you stand out and make people come and read your blog over the other one. Now that you've done all the preliminary research and you know what your blog is going to be about and you know what you love and you know all that good stuff, it's time to actually start the blog. So the very first thing you want to do is you have to figure out a name for your blog. And this tends to stump some people and they can't figure out what they want to name their blog. What I want to say is you want to think about the keywords of your site. What is your blog going to be about? Going back to our farming example, is it going to be the farming family. If you're going to be talking about farming as a family, you want to think about some things like that. Uh, farming, I mean, family at the farm. It can be something like that that has keywords that are going to talk to Google and tell them what this site is about. But it doesn't have to be. You probably notice a lot of people are using their name these days because when you get into the point and maybe you don't want to talk about that topic anymore, you want to talk about something else, it's very easy to transition your content versus changing the domain name and all that good stuff. So you want to choose a domain that's relevant relevant to what you're going to be doing or just choose your name or something that's going to be um, broad and easy to transition in the future if you want to do that. Now, after you've figured out what the name of your blog is going to be, you have to get a domain and that's simply the address that your blog is going to be. You want to make sure that you're choosing a dot and I know these days this is getting harder and harder as the internet progresses. People buy domains for fun, okay? Um, but you wanna try your best to get a .com. That is the most recognized and the most relevant out here. When you say your website to someone, people are automatically going to assume that it's .com. So definitely try to get the .com. If you can't get the .com, dot co um, I guess it's the next best option but definitely strive to get that dot com whatever the name of the blog is dot com don't get fancy with how you're trying to spell it adding hyphens and underscores and all that and spelling it very different let's just be clear not clever okay let's not try to be clever out here the goal is to be clear with our audience now you can get this domain at the same place that you actually get your hosting the hosting is what's going to have your blog up and running you have to do this now when i first started i went through bluehost.com and this is exactly who i would recommend today because it's cheap okay uh, if you are on a budget which most of us are when we're starting a lot of people don't want to throw this huge amount of money into their blog when they're first starting because you don't know what to expect you don't know how it's going to turn out i personally would recommend to do it for as cheap as possible and bluehost does have some of the cheapest hosting there is i started this at bluehost.com where i think mine was about two or three dollars a month or something like that it's super, super easy to set up. Now on my blog, I actually do have a step-by-step -step where you can see these instructions. Um, I'll link that down in the description if you'd rather just follow along that way. But you want to make sure that you go get your domain 
and get your hosting, which you can do those at the same place um, if you like. Obviously, you can do this separate. It's easy to just do it all at one place, okay? Do them all at Bluehost. Now, once you get your hosting set up, the next thing you're going to want to do is make your site look good, make it look professional, because this is what's going to keep people around. This is what's going to keep them coming back for more and wanting to stay on your site and tell other people about your site. It has to look the part. You don't want your site looking like, it, one, it's brand new, two, you're an amateur or something like that. So you want to purchase a theme. This is what makes your site look good and pretty and professional. And places like Etsy actually have really, really good domains. You you can find an array of designers that's offering domains on there. I will put a link in the description um, for who I recommend on Etsy to get your theme from. Really, really amazing themes, very professional. And I have a theme from there and I've been absolutely loving it. So I'll put the link in the description there. But once you implement your theme on your site, you will have to do a little playing around with the plugins and the widgets. All, most of these come with the theme, but just customize it. So whatever colors you choose for your brand, you can change the colors and make things look just good according to your preference, add your logo, add photos, all kinds of stuff like that. So it's super, super simple to get the blog up and running, but the content is where the work starts. Now that you have the blog all up and running, it's time to create some content. Now this content needs to be good, it needs to be helpful to your audience and share your journey along the way. So the very first thing you want to do is create a list of ideas. So just think of the topics that you think you wanna create and start a running list. This is going to help you from not knowing what you want to post from week to week because trust me you can get to that week and then you're like okay what do i want to post but when you have a running list of ideas and you plan your content out ahead of time this won't happen to you so the first thing you got to do is think of some things that you want to post about now back in your research phase of this topic, you should have come across different keywords, different questions, and different topics that your audience wanted to hear about. So this is a good starting point to think about those things that you came across often and create some blog posts around those things. Keep a running list. You can do that inside of Google Sheets or however you want to do it, but keep a running list of ideas so you always have somewhere to pick ideas from. Next, you want to do do some keyword research. Now, I like to do this about once a month just to kind of look up and see, you know, what's new that's popped up, what's trending and things like that. But you can sit down once a month, once a quarter, however you want to do it and do some keyword research. These are going to be the keywords that people are looking for inside of your niche or inside of the topic that you're talking about. And you want to create a running list of those as well. Now, when you're doing your keyword research you can simply do this on Google you can do this on YouTube or you can find a keyword research tool like KW finder or key search in order to do that I personally prefer to use um, KW finder because they have a really really um, in-depth analytics that they give you and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg like some of the other research tools are I go in and I save the different terms that it gives me and based on those um, research terms that it gives me that's how I come up with the topics of my blog post so next you want to make sure you have a running list of keywords that you want to create your blog posts around and so now that you have those keyword ideas you want to take those keywords and match them up with the blog post ideas that you created first so basically you want to tweak those blog post ideas that you created and make them include some of the keywords that you found for your niche or for your topic. That way you have already optimized the title of your post and made it search engine friendly. Now the easiest way I have found to write my blog post is to create an outline. That's what I like to do next. Once I have the keyword that I want to focus this blog post on, I make an outline of what the post is going to be like. So basically it's just a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how you want the blog post done. For me, this is easier because in my mind, I can say, okay, so what are the steps that they need to go through in order to comp accomplish the end goal 
or what are the key things that I want to talk about in this blog post and then I just outline it that way once I'm ready to sit down and actually write I can just go in under each topic and start writing about it so the next thing you want to do is to create an outline so that you can begin to do your blog now you just want to go in and fill in the information under each section always remembering your keyword and to add it in here or there you want to make sure that you focus on the introduction paragraph as well make sure that's optimized for the reader and that it has engaging words in it and that the person will want to continue reading after they read the first couple of sentences because let's be real people's attention spans are not that long and so you don't want to bore them in the first paragraph you want them to know that this is the blog post for you I'm gonna cover what you want me to cover and you should stick around now you also want to make the post skimmable because people don't necessarily read every word of blog posts but they will skim through the post just to see what's included to see if they want to read certain sections or if they want to read the whole thing now you do this by adding in headings to your blog post adding in extra photos and videos and things like that that are going to break up just a whole bunch of monotonous text right you want to add some things in so that visually it doesn't get boring because people want to be able to skim through and see what is in the blog post and if you just have a big chunk of information there they won't be able to tell that so make sure that you're formatting your blog post in a way that makes it easy to read for people to see if they want to continue reading and then finally you just want to do a quick edit to what you wrote and make sure everything has proper grammar it's punctuated well that it sounds clear and concise and then you want to get it out let me say this do not spend forever trying to get the post to be perfect because it's not going to be perfect the goal is to get up a minimal viable post so this is something that is basically a good rough draft right because the key to blogging is that you have to keep your content fresh and eventually you're going to go back and update that post so your original version of that post does not have to be perfect per se it needs to be good right I'm not telling you to put out anything but it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to always go back and add to that post you know in a few months and another year or whatever your content update schedule is going to be so doesn't need to be perfect you just want to get out you know a basic good enough post and just get it published and finally how are you going to make money with this blog in the beginning your expectations should not be super super high for making money with this blog the goal here is going to be to get up good quality information on your site so that you can begin to gain traffic to your website now there's organic ways to get that traffic through search engine optimization maybe you're using Pinterest but you you also can be actively marketing your blog via social media so that can be on Pinterest on YouTube on Instagram TikTok however you choose to market your blog you can actively do that and start to get your blog some traffic going right get those views going up on your blog but that needs to be the primary goal for your site is to get your traffic up because if people are not visiting your site your site is not going to make you money right so you need people's eyes on the content in order for that content to make money but once you do start getting people visiting you're gonna want to maximize those eyeballs that are on your content right you're gonna want to monetize that now there are two ways that I like to recommend for bloggers to make money when they're just starting it's much faster than getting accepted to an ad network because that takes sometimes thousands of page views but this is a much faster route to doing that the first one is going to be affiliate marketing now a Affiliate marketing is simply you receiving a commission for recommending a product or service to your reader. Now, one of the easiest ways to do this is if you're talking about lifestyle stuff or whatever your niche is, is to recommend the things that you're already using, the things that you like and love and that you can truly 
you know, tell people about. One of the most common ways to do that is through Amazon. Amazon has an affiliate program where you can make money off of the sales of the products and services that you recommend from them. This is one of the easiest ways to get started in affiliate marketing. Create some posts about things you like or things you love or naturally include them inside of your blog post and start getting some money trickling in with that. Affiliate marketing could be very, very lucrative once you begin to get that traffic to your site. And one of the good things here about starting off with affiliate marketing is once that traffic picks up, you have already included in some form of monetization in your beginning pieces of content so that when all the traffic comes in, you're not just making zero from the content that you've done or you have to go back and then include things in there. I'm not saying you should overstuff your articles with recommendations of items and all that, but if there's a natural fit, for instance, you're talking about your workout routine and you can slip in that I use these five, five pound weights here from Amazon, then that's a natural int integration and it makes sense for you to include your Amazon affiliate link. So. I think that it's fine to add a few affiliate links in your post and go ahead and get your content monetized from the beginning. And then the second way you can monetize your content from the beginning is with digital products. And I like to say with an ebook specifically. Now, what this ebook is, is simply you taking your knowledge on the topic that you are talking about and putting it in the form of a book. This is going to allow you to offer it to your customers for a small fee. So even if you offer this product for $5, that's $5 more than you would have been making if you didn't offer them anything. So I definitely think it's worth it to take the time to get your knowledge down on paper and create an ebook for your audience so that they can have a way to support your content and you can have a way to make money. Now, if you need help with putting together an ebook that sells and you want to figure out how to sell it in your blog I do have an ebook boot camp that will be linked down in the description where I walk you step by step from concept all the way through the sale on how to get this ebook up and running. This is the exact system that I use to make $1,500 in my first weekend launching my very first ebook. So if you're interested in that, click on the link down in my description, it will be there. But I definitely think that you should implement some form of digital product in the beginning on your site. It doesn't even really have to be an ebook. I think that ebooks um, have a really great conversion rate. People want knowledge and if they're there, on your site already for something, an ebook could be great for them because it's everything packaged into one. However, you could make a worksheet of some sort. You could create a uh, preset of some sort. There's so many different types of digital products. I personally just love ebooks because it's knowledge based and typically if someone comes to your site for a particular thing, they would want that condensed and put in one place for them to easily consume. So that's my personal preference, but there's so many different options when it comes to um, digital products. Now, as your blog grows and you continue to increase your page views and more people are visiting and clicking links and purchasing digital products and things like that, you will have more opportunity to monetize your blog in many, many different ways. These are just the first two that I recommend for smaller blogs or if you're just getting started. So yeah, that's the full breakdown of exactly what I would do to start a blog in 2023. I'm actually going through this process again this year because I feel like I'm starting from scratch, but if you are just starting or if you're rebooting your blog back up, let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I'm considering um, getting together a group of us who can work together to build these blogs together. I think that would be absolutely amazing because accountability is amazing when you're working in this online space. Let me know down below if you're starting or whatever your process is with your blog. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're looking for more ways to make money online as a content creator in 2023, check out this video right here because I go in depth on exactly how you can do that.